This week marks Black Maternal Health Week, and according to the CDC, the maternal mortality rate is three times higher for black women. Yeah, that's why journalist and advocate Elaine Welteroff is doing something about it. Hi, Elaine. Hi, ladies. How are you? How are you? Good. So, good so to see you. So tell us about this. Uh, well, it's Black Maternal Health yeah. Week, yeah. and I was here with you guys last year, almost yeah. a year ago with my baby, and I remember talking about this issue through the lens of having a fix-it spirit, because yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm just so tired of seeing sad stories yes. about moms losing their lives after childbirth. Yes. And when I learned that 80% of those maternal deaths are preventable, yeah. I'm like, so why aren't we working on solutions? M more of us talking about solutions. Yes. So I wanted to come back and talk to you guys I'm about glad. the solution I'm building. And you chose the midwife route, right? Yes, I okay. did. All I right. did. Let's so, take a look. Yeah, let's take a look. Ladies, I am so happy to meet you. And I also want to lead by just saying congratulations. Yes. We have so much to celebrate, ladies. Yes. You have a beautiful <laughs> six-month-old baby mm -hmm. that just stole my heart <laughs> in the um, hallway when I was walking yes. in, those gorgeous eyes. And you are six and a half months pregnant, <laughs> looking beautiful, just glowing like a goddess. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your, your experience into motherhood and and for you how you're settling into motherhood oh, yeah oh, six motherhood months in been, it's been so expansive you know it's like a really beautiful well that i've tapped into like patience and things that i didn't think i had and ashley tell me a little bit about your journey i wake up every day just like you have a little human growing inside of you and it feels so amazing so i had a miscarriage three miscarriages in one year mm. and each time I felt like, okay, I'm healed, I feel good, got pregnant, another miscarriage. And now that I'm finally in this pregnancy, I feel like there was some sort of mis-synchronization that just wouldn't allow it to, to come into fruition. I realized my, my literacy around like birth and my body and what happened was so low, even mm -hmm. though like, I'm a, I'm a journalist, supposedly I'm smart, <laughs> you know, I do research about things, I know how to advocate for things I believe in, but I came into this motherhood journey just really shocked at how little I knew about how to navigate it, and then especially how to navigate the medical system, mm -hmm. which was very daunting. What led you to this alternative path? Well, for me, I'd just grown up with so many um, instances where the hospital was not a safe space for my family. And you know, my father passed away in the hospital due to, they just missed something, you know? And I've never felt safe in the hospital. I knew that that was not something that I wanted. Like you hear, it, there's a complication, get a C-section. It's the first thing that they go to all the time. And you know, I had a, a good friend who had another experience with C-section where they um, didn't allow the pain um, medication to kick in long enough. So she was, you know, she was conscious for her whole experience and, and nobody listened to her about her feeling all of this pain. We've heard so many sad stories and then we, we see the stressful examples. Yes. yes. Black women who look like us. So much of the conversation around black birth mm -hmm. is fueled by trauma. Yes. How did that influence your decision to, to go the midwifery route? I have my master's in public health and government policy, and I remember saying that I wanted to continue my doctorate for postpartum grief loss, miscarriages, all of those things. Like, I was already a part of the miscarriage statistic that we have more miscarriages and whatnot, and I know it wasn't as, as associated with the hospital, but I was just like, you know, I don't want to be the other one. Like, I don't want to be that statistic. What? words of affirmation do you each mm. want to share i think what um reoccurs in my mind i have to reinstill myself with a lot of like this is happening um this you, you are going to carry full term yes. um like claiming it calling yeah it. i am enough it's the one that i used every time i felt like i didn't have enough in in labor i was like i'm enough you know the other one and my body's intuition will take over that's beautiful. Oh, oh my wow. gosh, this is so beautiful. So you're here not only to yeah. share this important conversation, but you also have some news that you're going to yeah. share with yeah. us. Yeah, um, so we actually kicked off Birth Fund, which is a coalition mm. of families that are 
coming together to invest our own resources and use our own platforms mm -hmm. to cover the cost of care for families all across this country who want access to midwifery but can't afford the out-of-pocket costs. And the reason why we're focusing on midwifery as a solution is because if you look at outcomes, birth outcomes all across the world in other high-income countries like Canada or the UK mm -hmm. um, you know, or France, they all have much better outcomes than yeah. us, and what they all have in common is midwifery as oh, their wow. default birth care model. And it's something that we don't hear enough about yeah. in this country, and we don't have access to, to it because it's not covered by insurance yes. in a lot of places. For me, it was, it was an option that helped me feel safe in the context of this big maternal health crisis. And I also think it's important to call out that, you know, this, yes, three black women are disproportionately affected, three mm -hmm. to four times more likely to die. But it's not a good picture for most of us yeah. out people. there, right? And so we can't afford to think of this as a black woman's problem or a poor person's problem because none of us are immune. The system is broken and it needs to be fixed. Well, you can't do this alone, so you needed a partner. Who'd you partner with for this? Well, I can't do any of this alone. Yeah. None of us can do yeah. this alone. This yeah. is a big, complex problem. It's going to take all of us working to fix it, and I'm so blessed to have some incredible founding funders mm -hmm. joining me, um, locking arms with me, from Serena Williams to Aisha Curry, Kelly Rowland, John Legend, Amazing. Alexis Ohanian. We have dads getting involved. That's a big piece of this conversation that they've been left out of, yeah. and you know, no one's more impactful than the dads who are left to come home and raise those kids on their own if their yeah. mother isn't making it home from the hospital. Wow. So we're involving them. We also have SoFi, by the way, on board as a founding wow. founder, and they are investing actual financial resources into these families because they did research and found that 56% of families feel like they can't even afford to think about having kids. So there's there's a maternal health crisis and there's also an economic crisis that are overlapping here. And so we want to equip families to feel excited about this time in their life, not to feel scared, yeah. you know? And I, when I talked to you guys about this last time, I said, let's come with a fix-it spirit, yeah. you know? Yes. And let, let's work together Which to fix what this you're problem. Doing. And you it's came amazing. back here with a solution. That's you're pretty incredible. incredible. Elaine, Thank you, Elaine. Thank you so oh, thank much. You we so appreciate much. it. Thank you, thank you.